think that's pretty good. Hello, if anybody's there, good evening. Hey, best yet, I loved your TV show. I stayed as long as I could. Living Miracle Homestead, hey, how you doing? Hi, Lady Bug Palmer. Now let Lydia speak to everybody else while I get going. Still in the hand is on. Yep. Hey, young Tia, how you doing? Hey, Denise, how you doing? Miss Debbie Epps, thank you for being here. Hi, Bob Brownlee. Miss B. Washington, Root Shoots and Garden Boots is here. I already spoke to Living Miracle Homestead. Growing with Hudson is in the house. Kim Stage 52 is here. Deborah White, hello. Gardener 99, thank you for being here. And Andrea Lucas from Tacoma, Washington. Okay, I'll be right back. I'm going to turn that fan off. sunflower I've ever grown. Now, I used seeds from last year, but they didn't get this big. I don't even know what happened. <laughs> I don't, I didn't do anything different other than we got a lot of rain and I kept trying to do everything I could to get the garden beds and containers to drain. I gave them a little bit more compost, side dressing them, a little bit more azomite rock dust because that helps uh, make the roots stronger, let them talk to each other. They're all connected. And in case of extreme drought, the water will be used by the roots that need it the most and just the opposite when it's really wet. And what else? I gave them some worm castings. And I mean, those stalks, whatever you all want to call where the sunflower grows, it grew about between 15 to 18 feet high up in the sky. Just huge, massive. Now, I've got a lot of emails about what I'm going to do with the seeds. One, let me say that I grew up eating sunflower seeds. But you guys know they come with a lot of salt on them, so I'm on a sodium-restricted diet, so I don't eat them anymore. However, I grew up eating sunflower seeds. We'd crack them with our teeth, eat the inside, spit them out. And I'm going to roast some of these, but I'm going to make a butter out of it. Uh, I made it before. My grand angels don't like it, and none of my grand angels eat sunflower seeds. I'm just going to put this down right here. And I had a couple more that got kind of big, but not as big. This is, I'm not going to take it all the way out, but you can get an idea how big the head is. And I have it in that uh, mesh bag that I get at Aldi's. And this one was pretty big. This one was up real high up in the air. Okay. So hold your questions or comments and I will get, I promise you, I will answer them. Let me see if I can put this fan behind me. 
but not in front of me because it makes my allergies act up. But anyway, um, yeah, that's better. Anyway, uh, I used the same seeds that I had been using. I used them last year. They may have gotten about eight feet tall, maybe 10. I don't really don't remember, but nothing like the incredible height that it got this year. And Brian didn't want me to cut them down, but you all know when the sunflower stops uh, being uh, erect, you know, face up like that, it droops down like that, that stalk is decaying and it's gonna fall. So we went ahead and harvested them um, Monday. But I'm gonna be giving seeds, five seeds of, of a big head, because my research and everything that I've learned about gardening, it says you should take your seeds from the biggest specimen um, that looks uniform. In other words, if you're going to collect heirloom tomato seeds, you wanna collect it not from the tiniest uh, fruit that pr that produced from that seed but from the, l the largest one that rule really applies to everything except seed potatoes I heard that you can take a little small potatoes that have chip tip that have roots on it hey thank you for the super chat and you can take a small potato and it can it can pr produce big potatoes but just like with everything DNA you want to get your best specimen so anybody that wants some of these seeds uh, after I dry them out and everything naturally I will send them to you and you guys know that my, my only thing is I don't send seeds in envelopes regular envelopes for the simple fact is I have been told that the machine that they go through at the post office can make some of the seeds sterile. So if you look at all your reputable companies, and I'm gonna show you this one, some seeds that I just got in from Baker Creek, you can see that it has a bubble wrap in there, Baker Creek. Here's what I got seeds in from Amazon, bubble wrap. I don't know if you can see that, but trust me, it's got bubble wrap in it, okay? So that's why I say send me money for print, uh, shipping because I will send your seeds in a black envelope just like I did the Texas Star hibiscus seeds. Bubble wrap, professional label where you can track it. The only thing I'm going to do different this time is once your, and let me say this nice as I can, once they leave me and they are registered uh, through tracking information at the post office, if you don't get them, I can't possibly keep sending them to you two and three times like I had to do the last time when I did the Texas Star Hibiscus. Don't you think that's fair? If I can track it and they said you got it, but you say you didn't get it, that should be between you and the post office. And on my end, too, I can file that uh, uh, research or whatever the term is if you don't get it but with those Texas Star Hibiscus seeds I kept sending them out to certain people over and over and I just can't do that this time so if you've got a weird address uh, or you live in an area where you know that they get your mail mixed up maybe you want to send them to a relative like mom and them house or grandma and them that's there every day at home like me and got that ring and, and have um, uh, video evidence, okay? I think that's fair. But I don't sell seeds, and there's nothing wrong with selling seeds. I, to my subscribers and people in my Facebook group, I'm gonna give you the seeds, I'm asking you to pay for the track, tracking and the shipping. And we'll get to that when it's time, okay? Um, I don't know, my grand angels, they, they coming up in a different generation than my children. They ate sunflower seeds. Thank you, Tia. I think it's fair, too. Some of these young people, um, I don't know how to say this, come from incomes that are a little bit higher than I had as a kid. So certain things, if their parents don't eat, they don't eat. They're kind of picky. 
so my my grandkids wouldn't even eat the sunflower seeds but i love them and i'm going to be roasting some and uh and i'll be sending some of you guys of the unroasted seeds out now the first thing i want to talk to you all about today is this The YouTube is supposed to be fun. We're supposed to be a community of like-minded people. And when I say like-minded, I mean with a common goal of learning how to garden and get results. And the longer you've been gardening, you should want to get more and more better results. And you should be learning. And so we all learn from each other. There is no head honcho in the gardening community. No major leader. We all have something valuable that we can share with each other. For an example, today in my Facebook group, I, you can't see it in here, but I have holes in this mason jar. Well, you can see in here now, but you're not going to be able to see the specimen. There are seven little worms that look like they had, they kind of look like corn worms, but they had a different color. Now, I'm going to go real quick to my Facebook group. And it was a young man asked the question answered my question because I used to have that app on my phone where you could identify insects and you can identify um, plants and things. And I saw something that looked really weird and for some reason it, it didn't scare me. And I picked these little caterpillars or worms right off of my Awardian Satsuma tree like a little tangerine and I made a little video of it I don't think you all would be able to see. well you can you can kind of see it you'll see that in my hand and years ago when I would pick up something like this I would just put it on the ground and step on it stomp on it and kill it Something told me, go in the house and get a mason jar. I see two or three more. And they were easily picked up. Okay? And then after closely examining it again, I knew it was some type of caterpillar that was going to metamorph into some type of hybrid Allen, some type of uh, moth or butterfly. So I made that little video and I went on my Facebook group book. And a, a man uh, uh, quickly asked you, his name is Kerry Smith in my Facebook group. And you guys are welcome to join anybody um, as long as you answer the three questions. When you, you know, uh, click on to join it. And he let me know it was a lemon tree caterpillar, often called California orange dogs. They are the giant larvae. I mean, larva of the giant swallowtail butterfly. And then he gives the technical name, Papilio Crestfontes Kramer. People with butterfly gardens frequently plant citrus tree varieties to entice these butterflies to their landscape to uh, supply them with food. And I did notice a lot of eaten up leaves. So after he told me that, and they'll go steal like they like they uh they're dead, but they're not. So I went and got some of the leaves that they were chewing on already, and I just put my hand in my little rainwater and just dropped a few little drops in there to put some moisture in there so that they could survive. And then oh, that was my sunflower seed. <laughs> uh, and then I put holes in this uh cap here and just set it there without a ring and every now and then I open it up and make sure it gets a lot of air in it but it's supposed to rain and I've been watching real closely the, the weather 
And my daughter calls me like she normally does when she's uh, driving home from school, from the school where she's assistant principal. And she says it's pouring down raining. And then she drives further down the road, get closer to the vicinity where she and I both live. She lives less than a mile and a half from me. There's no rain. So I'm leaving them here until the rain pass, and then I'm going to go put them back on the tree that I found them on. So let them uh, develop into the swallowtail butterflies. And I just wanted to share that with you. Don't be so quick to stomp on something or kill something thinking it's a predator. And I told the people in my Facebook group, and I posted a picture of a parasitic wasp that gets inside of hornworm eggs, and they live there. And then as they grow, as the hornworm grows, then the parasitic wasp will come inside and start eating them from the inside out. And this is what it looks like. And the first time I saw that, it grossed me out. See those little white things? That's eating that hornworm from the inside. The first time I saw that, I picked it up with a, grabbed it with a, like a fistful of soil, put it on the ground and killed it. But I shouldn't have done that. Cause wasps, Wasps will fertilize, not fertilize, I'm sorry, pollinate your flowers or your fruit, just like bees will. And so I killed it, then I went and looked at it, looked it up, and later I found it. So let's not be so quick to assume any funny looking or any weird or insect that we haven't seen before is bad. Because wasps usually don't bother you unless they feel they are being attacked. Like you're trying to destroy their habitat, their home, those little dirt balls that you see that they put in the ceiling or around the gutters of your home. Or they can have like a little nest on your fence and you try to knock it down with the water hose, then they may come toward you to sting because they feel that you're invading into their safe haven, their territory, okay? And yes, I've been stung by a wasp before. In fact, I got stung right here while I was watering and didn't realize I was stirring up a nest. And I immediately went back to something my mother-in-law taught me, so I'm gonna share this little pearl with you. And I'm sure some of you are probably gonna not disagree I mean, you're probably going to disagree with me and tell me that there's something else that you could have used. But I immediately remembered when my daughter fell into a, a fire ants. We didn't have fire ants in Indiana where I grew up. And we moved to Mississippi and Lisa, my oldest daughter, my oldest child, fell into some uh, fire ants and they were eating her up. And she said, come here, baby, come here. She ran and she got bleach and she put it on paper towel or rag or something and she started wiping her down. So that's what came to my memory. I ran in the house, got paper towel, put a little bleach on it, and it was stinging. It was stinging bad, guys. This was a uh, Friday, and it took that sting, that poison, whatever that is that feels real hot, it took it out immediately, and it didn't even blister or anything. So don't be so afraid of wasps. Just keep working, watering, and working around like you know they're not there, especially when you have a lot of fruit trees. Or if you don't have fruit trees, but you have a lot of uh, cucumbers, squash, melon, things that have to be pollinated, they will pollinate your vegetables and your fruit, okay? So don't be so quick to destroy insects. Another thing that I used to, well, I killed a couple of them were um, ladybugs larvae. They're black and skinny. I'm sure you all know what they are. If you haven't Googled it after this is over, I don't have a picture of that. But I killed a couple of those years ago before I knew that they would morph into ladybugs, which would eat aphids. Okay? So, capture or take a minute. All of you all have phones now. I didn't have that when I killed the lar from, from the ladybugs back in the day. Do you all have that, that feature now? It's right at your fingertips. Google it before you kill it. Because ladybugs will be your friend in the garden by killing those nasty aphids. 
and there are uh, thousands of different varieties of eight fits, okay? And if you haven't already, you might want to, if you're an organic gardener like myself and a lot of you in this room, you might want to buy you some ladybugs and release them in your garden every year or every other year, okay? All right. I don't have a video on that showing you how to do that. Now, I'm looking here. Peanut Peppers is saying he's highly allergic to bees and wasps, but I still would to have bees. Still want to have bees. I understand what he's saying. And there are some people that are allergic to the sting of a bee and a wasp. You need to get out the way and do what you need to do. There are always exceptions to the rule. I'm just saying, if you are a person like me that's not allergic, and thank you for bringing that up, Peanut, because that is some really good information. I appreciate it. Don't fear them. Because what the majority of the species that pollinated my jujube tree, and this is the first year I'm getting fruit on it, were wasps. And they were real high up in the air in the tree. There's many wasps going. I kept looking and looking. I said, oh, they're all up on those flowers. Very few bees. It was mostly wasps. And they are smart. They didn't want to come in contact with me because they know I may fear them or they feared me. So they stay mostly at the top of the tree. The tree is loaded with jujubes at all at the top, not too much at the bottom, okay? I'm really glad I didn't cut that tree down because I was going to top that tree off and try to root it or do a, um, I saw my nephew broke farmer. Uh, I missed one of his videos where he was, um, air layering it. That's what I had planned to do, was to air layer that jujube. I'm glad I didn't do it this year because it is loaded for the first time. And when I sh shared it within a fruit tree group, I was told that if I didn't have a another vi uh, variety to cross-pollinate, like a Lee and a Lane, I wasn't going to get any fruit. But it is loaded with fruit. And we will be harvesting it, and I'll be sharing that video with you. So there are some trees that are native to your area, and who you purchase them from, if they're reputable, if they're honest, they'll tell you the truth. And that guy told me I didn't need a pollinator with that native leaf uh, jujube. I was getting ready to say elderberry because he told me that I didn't need one for the elderberry. It's, these all grow in the rural on his mother's air, uh, for, uh, uh, land. And I joined the elderberry Facebook group. And in that group, they told me I wasn't going to get any elderberries. I was just going to get the flowers that you could make champagne, wine, or a syrup, an eating syrup, not with the medicinal benefits like the elderberries that helps your immune system and blah, blah, blah. Well, now those flowers turned to little berries. So you just have to like experience it for yourself, listen to people, do your research, and know that there are exceptions to the rule. Okay. Okay, let's see what's else on my agenda. Today's topic is going to be why you should be, everybody should be growing this no matter what zone you're in, even if you don't like it, because this Okay, it's a vegetable. I was going to say, oh, I said, I doggone it. I messed up and said it. Okra, it has a very good health benefit. And all of us know somebody who is diabetic or pre diabetic. I'm pre diabetic, meaning I am. Genetically, probably will get diabetes if I don't regulate my diet. I've been pre-diabetic for about eight years, I think, and 13, uh, 13 years with kidney disease. 
father had kidney disease, was on dialysis at the time of his death in his 80s. And my mother died of complications of diabetes. Everybody listening? So, a young lady from the Philippines told me, a nurse in my Facebook group, about five years ago, maybe less or more, to drink okra water. And I said, okra water? Just like okra tea. And sure enough, hello, Cherie, how you doing? Sure enough, I started doing research. I don't know why I had never heard of this before since all these people in my, in my family have uh, diabetes type 2 which is a little bit easier to control high nature nine than type one. And I just stumbled across a whole lot of information on diabetes and I started making the tea. So now I'm gonna bring up some of this information that I jotted down. I got a monitor over here and a monitor over here. And it has been proven that the health benefits of okra can the consumption of it can improve diabetes. Number one, one of the main foods that can control type 2 diabetes is okra. Now let's talk a little bit and do a little in-depth study of okra. And I'm going to get your question in a minute. Okra or okra water can lower your blood pressure. It can lower your cholesterol levels. It can improve your mood swings and strengthen your human, human immunity. Now, so if you are not predisposed to diabetes, some of you all have high blood pressure or predisposed to that. Some of you all have higher cholesterol levels. Some of you all have mood swings and some of you need to strengthen your immunity. So even if you're not diabetic, okra is something that you can incorporate into your diet and improve your overall health. Now, check this out. Okra will grow anywhere. Okra will grow in grass like corn. This corn is from the grass family. It can grow in clay soil, sandy soil, rich soil, poor soil. Okra will grow. Anybody in this chat right now can grow some okra. So if you haven't started any, I recommend that you do. My last video, I just made a makeshift impromptu bed in front of my future she shed. Everything in that she shed is going to be thrown away. We already went through it. My kids got everything they wanted out that belonged to the dad. Everything in that shed, I'm going to pay somebody to come up and just haul it away. So right now, this summer, I'm not going in there. So I put a bed there, and I put five seedlings that I grew, the okra from seed, and I did uh, two on each end, uh, Black Beauty eggplant. Because both of those can grow in the heat. And they're doing great. I've been going out there watering them every day just a little because they're seedlings and they're young. So now let's talk about how I consume okra. Now I can eat okra any kind of way. I've learned to roast it. I've learned to barbecue it without out on that salt kind of grill it or sauce. S-A-U-C-E. I put, do it in the air fryer. Of course, you know the regular fry, stir fry. Uh, and I use olive oil because olive oil is so good for your health. And I, But the main way I like to eat okra is just in soups and stews. It acts as a thickening agent, and I just love the taste of it. And I, when I cook it and it turns into a soup, it's not slimy. When I fry it or stir fry it, when I fry it with cornmeal, blah, 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 you know, egg wash, it's not slimy. Or when I stir fry it with tomatoes in a pan with a little olive oil, it's not slimy. The only time it's going to be slimy is when you use it as a tea. 
Somebody said it's good raw. I sit right out there in my prayer garden and just sit there and crunch and eat that okra raw. Sure have. And you're right, Miracle Homestead. I think your first name is Kathy. I can eat it raw. I can dehydrate it and eat it like chips. Cut them real thin, put them in your dehydrator. I sure can. I can eat okra anyway. But anyway, let's show you how you make the tea. You want to take about four medium-sized pods. You're going to wash them, clip off both ends, and poke little holes in it. Then you're going to put them back into a glass of water, cover them with room temperature water, cover it up, let it soak overnight, and then, and this is the bad part if you don't like that slimy part, get you a slotted spoon and lift that up, and it's going to be a little slimy, and then I just say guzzle it down. I don't think about it. I just do it. Don't forget to hit that like button. Yes, thank you, Lydia. Okay? Then you can put the uh, discarded pods into your uh, compost. Okay? So if you do this once a day, it will reduce your A1C levels. Now, those of you that are having diagnosed uh, pre-diabetic or diabetic, Diabetes want to, and you on metformin, don't go, get off your medicine. I say this over and over again when we were talking about the Texas Star Hibiscus drinking the tea to lower your blood pressure. Don't get, hello, uh, Miss Kia Parks. Uh, don't get off your blood pressure pills and say that Lady Cheryl told me I could lower it with uh, the hibiscus tea. No, I still take my blood pressure pills. Yes. But I still drink my tea every day. The same thing with the okra. I want to keep my A1C down. At one time, it was 6.8. 7.0, you are diabetic. Type 2. I got my, my uh, A1C down at 6.3. I don't take any medication. But they were getting ready to put me on some. And I said, oh, no, 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 no. Okay? And that's when that lady, that nurse that was in my group told me about the okra. So I eat okra almost every day. How many of you have seen my soup? I take that soup and I put shrimp or something like that in it, which and I'm getting ready to name some other things that'll help you with the diabetes. This will help you. You see, the chemical and, and pharmaceutical manufacturers, they want us to be addicted to all these drugs to make money off of us. But we can help ourselves with what we grow and help our bodies, strengthen our bodies, help prevent a lot of diseases by helping ourselves. So I'm on a mission. I'm on a mission now to grow what I like to eat, but what is good for my body, mentally and physically, okay? So let me tell you another thing that you can do if you don't have fresh okra. You can freeze it. You can can it. Okay? This study, uh, who was this study by? I don't think I put it down. The people, they, they, they compared and contrasted the results of people using frozen okra, fresh okra, and canned okra, and all the results were the same. So you guys can grow this okra and freeze it and can it. Tomorrow my video I'm going to drop is going to be how I am freezing my green beans and tomatoes until it gets cooler in Texas. It's too hot. And my my uh, air conditioner would never shut off if I start canning right now. Okay? I would love to have what Miss Lydia from Best Yet Homestay, Best Yet Journey, have that outdoor kitchen. She's got her own little setup out there, her sink and just everything. I would love to have something like that outside where I could can outside because right now it's too hot. Now we got a little cooler weather because we got some rain coming in, but it'll be right back up to 98 degrees in a couple of days. Can I grow okra by direct sow? Yes, ma'am. I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. So okra is not expensive. It's cheap. The seeds are cheap. Any kind of soil it'll grow. 
I recommend if you're gonna grow it in a container, like a five gallon bucket, don't put more than three pods in one. And a lot of us are using them 17 gallon um, rope buckets from Walmart. I recommend that you don't put more than seven in that 17 gallon bucket. And of course you wanna put one every square foot or two, two, no more than two every square foot if you're doing it into a raised garden bed or a row, okay? Yes, they, the doctors want you to keep on coming back. And guys, let me tell you, if you didn't know, your doctors get a kickback on all the prescriptions that they write for you, okay? I've had pickle okra from a store I paid eight to $10 for it. I used to love pickle okra, but it doesn't pickle well without salt. So I have the high blood pressure, so I gotta do the sodium free. So I stopped pickling it, cause it didn't taste tasty to me. I'd rather have it uh, 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 dehydrated. Okay, so all of the parts of the okra are good for you to eat. You can can it, you can fast it. Uh, if you look at my video tomorrow that I'm going to put out, real short videos, not even be five minutes long, about how to blanch green beans and put them up for the uh, winter, you do the okra the same way you do green beans. Okay, so I did mention this because I got this in real big letters. If you are taking metformin to control your diabetes, please be aware that okra water usage may interfere with the metformin. So you want to check with your doctor at all times when you are using or, or something for medicinal purposes. Okay? Okay, let's see. I think I covered everything else. Now, this is just real quick. I'm going to tell you some other things that will help you if you got anybody in here that's diabetic or pre-diabetic. Some of the foods you should be eating. Then I'm going to talk about how you grow okra. I'm going to name them off real quick, and you can come back and watch the repay, replay and write this stuff down. Olive oil, because it contains a lot of monosaturated fats that are found in nuts and seeds. Cinnamon, because it does something to help the body lower its ability to be resistant to making insulin. Green tea, I think everybody knows all about that. I'm not going to go into detail. Lentils, beans, peas, chickpeas. These are all low in calories and they're rich in fiber protein, which helps lower your sugar absorption in the blood. Guys know if you diabetic or pre-diabetic, you should be eating all kinds of fresh vegetables. Vegetable leaves, lettuce, cabbage, spinach, Swiss chard. Everything, cucumber, celery, we can go on and on and on. The more greens, kohlrabi. And by the way, all these things, cauliflower, greens, kohlrabi, all these things that I named, they also have hormones that will reduce your appetite. Okay? Oatmeal, because it has a lot of fiber in it, vitamin B, vitamin 1, and vitamin E. Red apples. Vitamin C foods like berries, fruits, peppers, dark leafy vegetables, kiwi are excellent. And tomatoes are also loaded with antioxidants. Now let's talk about your feet, your fish. Because those who suffer with diabetes are twice likely to have heart disease. My mom was diabetic and had heart disease. So you want to drink, drink. You want to eat a lot of cold water fish like mackerel, oysters, salmon, sardines, trout, tuna, cod, halibut. Okay? And if you want candy or chocolate flavor, they recommend that you uh, eat raw cacao powder when you're making your um, chocolate milk or something like that or uh, muffins. If you gotta eat beef, they recommend you eat grass beef, beef, grass-fed beef, and apple cider vinegar, and of course, I already mentioned okra, turmeric, I didn't mention turmeric, ginger, 
And that's aloe vera. Okay, are there any questions on the foods that are good for people who, have, who are diabetic or pre-diabetic and why okra is very, very instrumental in lowering your A1C? Are there any questions about that? And then I'm gonna tell you how to grow okra. I don't think we have any questions about it. Cynthia's backyard gardening says she loves okra. She just planted some. Thank you for being here, Nature Dine. Say, get ready to eat dinner. He just stopped by to show some love. Let me, let me, let me talk, address that too. Now. When I come into your lives, those of you that have do live streams, I want you to know I don't come in there to get in your life. When you all, a lot of you are using that uh, stream, I forgot what it is. Yard stream, I think it is. And I've had a couple people tell me, um, or tell everybody, well, I don't want people who got an, uh, already got a built-up channel. I just want people who have a, a hundred subscribers or less, and then I'll catch another live, and then they got somebody in there that's got 50,000 subscribers, so they really weren't honest. But that's okay, I understand. So when I come into your life, I'm coming in to show you some love and some support and sometimes I'll even tell my nephew, Broke Farmer 76, that I am filling orders while I'm listening. Or I'll tell Lily. Um, I said Lily, but I meant to say best yet. I'm there to show support. I'm not there to take over your life or be a guest on your show. Now, if you invite me, and you want to do something like with me one-on-one, -on -one, I'll be happy to do it when I can. But I just come in. Thank you, Andale, because you'll be in there supporting too. We're in there to be to, to support. I'm not in there to try to take over, intimidate, or you have to watch what you say because you think you may say something in the room. But if you ask me a question, then you think because I, you know, I have a lot of experience that I can answer it, I'll be more than happy to oblige you. But I don't want nobody to get nervous, think I'm critiquing them, and I'm just I'm just there to show you some support. Okay? All right. Thank you, The Sweet Spot. I saw you on Lydia's TV show. You did a wonderful job. Thank you so much. I appreciate I appreciate what Lydia, I said Lily. I couldn't say Lydia. I appreciate what she's doing. She's spotlighting people and giving them a platform. You know? And I think it's great. I did see a question. Just planting spineless okra, Clemson spineless okra. I could, didn't get all of it. Somebody wanted to know about the, uh, I saw it while I was talking, the aloe vera. Okay, so this study in Pyotherapy Research showed that the aloe vera extract lowered the blood sugar level in rats. And so the study concluded that the pulp of the aloe vera is potently useful to treat diabetes. But that does, and so you can start drinking the juice. But again, don't get off your medication. I got an aloe vera plant back there for that reason. I'll just cut a limb off about once every two weeks and, you know, get that gel out of there and put it in my smoothie. I don't do it every day. But you can buy the aloe vera juice. I hope I answered your question. Whoever was that. Hey, Bougie Pepper. Yes, Bobby Wilson. That's what I'm going to talk about next. Okra. I already said it. <laughs> okra grows very well in the heat. I have 10 okra plants producing pods. Hezekiah Sparrow is saying that. Waiting on some more to transplant. Yeah, go ahead on and plant some. You can plant it all the way up until July. Because most of us, well, it depends on where you are. If you're like where Cherie is in zone four or five, you might want to get all that planted now. Because it thrives in hotter weather. 
But I'm gonna plant some more tomorrow. I'm gonna start some more seeds tomorrow because I'm gonna put the ones that I have left in a garden bed. And then I'm gonna start some more seeds tomorrow. And because it's warm outside, it's hot, they will germinate in about three days at the most. So in about 10 days, they will be ready for me to transplant into a garden bed. Now, like I said earlier, okra grows very well in any kind of soil, but you gotta remember this about okra. It does not like to be moved around. The roots do not like to be played around with. So once it germinates, and I'm gonna use those peat pellets that at home with Cherie, made it look so easy to use and I had stopped using them because the fabric would tear the roots off of your plant when you removed it. And so Jiffy has made a very easily removed fabric with it now. So as soon as I see that they have germinated because it's not in loose Jiffy C starting mix, I can remove the fabric and put it make a hole into my little cup or container and put that whole pellet down in there. And I'm not disturbing the roots. And then 10 days later, when I actually flip it over and gently remove it out of the container and I have dug my hole and put it down in my hole, I'm not disturbing the roots that much. But before I used the pellets, before I saw it at home with Cherie, before I ordered them, she was nice and gracious enough to send me the link on Amazon because I wanted to make sure I got the same ones. I had already put three seeds in little solo cups. So I did the video where I was gently separating them as gingerly as I could. And thank God all of them took. But as a rule, don't put a lot of seeds together and then separate them because if you're not real careful, they will die on you. Okay, Lady Cheryl, how do you know that? Because I done messed up a lot of times. So I'm telling you what I did. I was too rough with them and took them a loose. Oh, forget it. Dug a hole, plopped them in there, and they died. Because <laughs> those roots were disturbed. So be very, very careful, okay? You don't need a lot of fertilizer. The only thing I'm gonna give my okra is some okra, uh, some, I'm sorry, some comfrey tea. And that's the other thing that I'm gonna be giving away is cop, uh, little pieces, unrooted pieces of the comfrey. And I'll be doing a series and showing you how that Russian Block 14 comfrey will germinate the or produce roots with the smallest little piece. And I'm going to be doing that also in the fall. Okay? Now that, you will have a chance to win the cuttings. I'm not just going to send anybody to tell me they want a piece. You can win it. And we'll talk about that later. Okay? All right. Okay, I'm ready for your questions. I covered everything I wanted to cover, except I want to cover this. I started this 12, 30, 2020 bourbon with uh, vanilla beans. These are gonna be Christmas presents. They're gonna age for one year. And they're gonna go in the little four ounce bottles. I already have them. And this is vodka and vanilla beans started on the same day. Bourbon costs a little bit more than vodka. All you do is have to shake it up like once every two weeks now. At first, it was every couple of days. But this has been, you know, have been in here for almost, well, today is the 20th, 21st. This has been your six, 12, six months. Yeah, so we're going to have uh, extra strong vanilla extract that I'll be giving away for Christmas. I want you all, I just brought that to remind you guys that you could be thinking about now what you're going to be doing or giving away for Christmas. And I think that that track is going to be really good. And I'm going to do some other fruits and stuff too that, you know, my trees are producing. 
So that's going to be a lot of fun. All right. Yeah, that's going to be some nice. Thank you, Stinky Puddle Ranch. That's going to be some amazing extract because it's going to age for a year. You don't have to uh, age it but two weeks, two weeks or more. But the longer it's age, the stronger it's going to be. Because I showed you guys when I first did it but, uh, in December, I showed you a, a little bottle, a four ounce bottle that I got from the Pampering Shelf. But that's $58. That is, they say it is double strength. That's what this will be. It will be worth about 60 bucks, four ounces. When I, uh, just, and I got two of these. I got two bourbons and I got two uh, vodka. My son was coming to visit me uh, a day or so after Christmas. He said, Mama, you need anything? I said, yeah, I want some vodka and some <laughs> bourbon. Vodka and bourbon, bourbon. When you start drinking liquor, I said, don't worry about it. Are you going to bring it or not? Yeah, I'll bring it. And then I showed him what I was going to be doing with it. He just fell out laughing. Okay. All right. So how do we grow the okra? Any soil. Get it started now. It loves the heat. I saw home with Sharice was saying something about her garden zone. I'm going to go back up to the top. Now, I want to bring this to your attention because I see Best Yet Journey. Every Monday for the next, I think she's doing eight weeks, please go by and tune in to her TV show on YouTube. It's like, it's, I think she ends it about an hour before mine. Best Yet, you can put your link in, please. And then you all leave her and then you come and see me. Somebody said they're happy that the okra is coming up. All right. Now, after best yet, get that, get that uh, link to her channel up. Now, that doesn't mean that you all can come in my live and start linking up any channels that you want. I've seen people just try to do that. That's not proper YouTube etiquette, okay? Only if the host asks you. Or, unless you're a moderator, and they'll put my playlist in. My moderators do everything that they can. Yes, she said she missed the show today, but she will watch the replay. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. And that's Terry Smith. Gardener 99 in my Facebook group that told me what these caterpillars were. Thank you, Terry. And see, I don't, I don't let my uh, Facebook group put their videos on my Facebook page. Why? I think it makes them lazy. I'm here to inspire you and to motivate you to start your Facebook group. I'll join your group. Then I'm not going to sit there and answer all the questions in your group. Like some people used to try to do me. I got out of those groups. Mm -hmm. You got to do the work. You join my group, see how I do it, take some good stuff from my group or bad stuff from my group and make, make your own style and do your own thing. Okay? So, Carrie, now I know that's you, Gardener 99. Thank you for letting me know that. Start your group. I will support your groups. But I don't let people put their YouTube videos on on my, face, my, my Facebook group. Because my group is my brand. Lady Shiro's Organic Food Forest and Natural Products. So that's my brand. So I'm not going to advertise your YouTube videos. But I'll shout you out here. I'll shout you out in a community post. But a certain etiquette that you, you got to gotta get. Okay? Okay. Lady sure, what can I do to pervert, oh, prevent my greens from bolting? You can pinch off the, uh, the part that's bolting, but just know this. Once it gets too hot, you can pinch them off every day. 
it's gonna bolt. When the leaves start getting closer and closer together and looking like a tower, instead of spreading it out like this, it's time to go ahead on and cut them, Brenda Allen, and put something else there. You can slow down the bolting, but you can't stop it. This is like a freight train. Once it's in that mode to bolt, it's going to bolt. Okay, I'm going back and looking for questions, and then I'm gonna tell you some of, some of the things that you can do to prevent aphids from getting all over your okra, because it'll take it out. I'm looking for questions, but I don't see any more. Okay, zone A, B is soggy and humid, C mold on my tomato stem leaves, and several fruit nonstop rain. Okay, Helena, I just got through my, my bad period. You can use milk and water as a spray. You can use baking soda and water as a spray to help with that mildew, that liquidy, powdery mildew. I like Serenade by, uh, I forgot the name of the company, but it's organic and you can get it off of uh, Amazon. You might want to check with some big box stores. I'm not really sure. The only thing you can do for that, uh, Helen, is cut all the branches that are close to the ground off. I say this is your tomato plant. Cut all these branches off so air can get in there and flow. And if you go back and look at my last few videos before I harvested my tomatoes, that's all me and Bree and Brian kept doing. I just kept cutting and cutting and cutting and cutting until the rain period stopped, and then I harvested all my tomatoes. Because tomatoes are one of the few fruits that can be harvested green and put on your table calendar. You don't even have to be in the sun. They will continue to ripen and continue to sweeten off the vine. In fact, I gave my grandbabies a little history lesson about how tomatoes are grown on the farm, how they harvest them. They harvest them when they're green. And they wrap them up in tissue paper and they put them in these little purple blue crate things and the paper there. And when they ship them out to these big chain stores, they are not red and juicy and soft. They're green. Then they put them out when they're turning uh, blush or almost red. Same thing with bananas. Bananas are harvested when they're green, not when they're yellow and ripe. Okay? So I hope I helped you. Cut those stems and branches off. There's nothing you can do but create some air flow in there. But as long as the Mildew is just on the leaves and yellowing of the leaves and it's not on the tomatoes, you're fine. That is not blight. But you'll know if you got blight because the tomatoes will start getting rotten. I'm highly allergic to bees. Oh, I think that's uh, Kathy from Living Miracle Homestead trying to tell us that the wasps will also eat aphids. Yes, they will. Okay, now. Let's talk about this okra. Okra. When you watering your okra, when you just walking around checking on your babies, I call them babies because they plants when they small. What you need to watch out for is aphids. And the main indicator that you have some aphids under your okra leaves are ants. When you see a lot of ants crawling around your okra, up your stalks, get your water hose and blast them off. Because the ants will farm aphids, meaning the ants will surround the aphids to protect them because they like the sugary, honeydew, sweet substance that the aphids excrete. I had a lady try to argue me up and down, tell me that the okra was being eaten up by ants. And no matter how I tried to explain it to her, 
Ants don't eat okra leaves. They want that juice. Ants really don't even like solids. They'll climb all around a tomato if it's got a hole in it and they're just sucking up the juice out of it. So if you see a lot of ants, blast them off with water. Water will not drown the ants, but water will drown atheists. You can use your soap, you can use little dish soap or uh, Castile, vegetable Castile soap, Dr. Bonders. Uh, you can with a little. Um, sometimes you can get with a little peppermint oil. I don't recommend using any oils if you live in a warm climate. Let's say whether it's going to be 80, 85 degrees or warmer. I don't. I don't believe in that because the water and will evaporate, but the oil that's in the dish soap and the neem cold press oil will stay on those layers of leaves and it will burn. How do you know? Because I done burned up some stuff. I went out there and I sprayed my whole garden with neem oil and water. And it was like about 90 degrees. And the next day it was 100. So I took the water hose out, I kind of rinsed it all off. The oil stayed there. And it burns it up. So be careful with oils when it gets hot. Because it builds up like shellac on wood, a coating. Just stays there like shoe polish on your shoes. Over and over. Somebody tell me they sorry. Yeah, I made a lot of mistakes. I want you all to learn from my mistakes. I kill peach trees. I know I can't plant a peach tree in the ground April through June. Because it's just going to be sitting in a pool of water. How do you know, Lady Sure? That's how they kill some bee trees. They don't like wet feet. I kill cherry trees. I'm not one of those gardeners that's going to sugarcoat everything and make you all think I do everything perfect. I learned by my mistake. Who's saying Ann is saying it right now? Ann, is, Ann Dale is saying something right now. Experience is a true teacher. Yes, it is. I bet you I won't kill another one. Not because of something that I do. <laughs> but I don't mind telling you all I didn't kill stuff. That's how I learned. And I don't want you all to kill stuff, so I'm telling you all what I learned. Do not put oil sprays once it gets past 85 degrees because it's going to keep on like shoe polish on your shoes, you polish it over and over again. And the first day you hit 92, 93 degrees, you're going to come out there and go, oh, my God. Then you'll send me a picture in the email telling me, asking me why your leaves change your colors. I know what happened because I did it. <laughs> and the preacher said, uh, he said, I know what it's like to be an alcoholic because I was an alcoholic. I shut down the liquor stores. I've never been an alcoholic, but I'm just saying, I could relate to what he was saying because he's been there, done that. Okay? All right. <laughs> Who is that hands in the dirt? I have cereal killed some blueberries. Would you have the pH too high? Hands in the dirt, did you have the pH too high? Because that's another one you got to learn. If you put the wrong fertilizer on blueberries that love acidic soil, like around 5.5, .5, and you put something in it and make it go up to 7, you kill them. How do you know? I didn't kill some too. <laughs> I sure did. So we learned from our mistakes, guys. I killed some blueberries. Somebody said, bougie pe peppers, and that's what's happening to me. I guess she's talking about too much oil on her plants. Yeah. So this time of the year, I switch. I use my repellent. My repellent is garlic, onions, and red pepper flakes. They don't kill 
Thank you, Lydia. They don't kill the insects. They just have a funky smell and they fly over them now. Oh, let's get away from there. And they go someplace else. So I go around spraying that because he doesn't have any oil in it. Then you got to know what insects eat what and if it's going to bother your fruit. Like this right here. Ooh, you can see them them little worms all the way to the top. I'm going to try to get in here. I'm going to try to pull out a leaf. See that leaf all ate up? So are my goodies. See that leaf all ate up? They leak, they, they eating off of the leaves. It's okay, go ahead on and eat them. You're not gonna bother the fruit. Oh, citrus leaves, they smell so delicious. If, if you all wore that caterpillar or that worm, you eat them too. How you gonna ma masquerade that? They gonna smell that. I don't care if I do put the oil, not the oil, scratch that. I don't care if I do put the garlic, the funky onions, and the red pepper flakes. If I spray that on top of lemons, they still gonna smell it in there. So you gotta work with nature. Some things you, you know, you can protect. Some things you can't. So as long as they're eating the leaves and they're not messing with the fruit, they got to eat too. Okay? You got to work with nature. Those little worms <laughs> eat so much. Cherie, they do. Uh, a hoeing worm can devour a whole branch of a tomato plant overnight. You come out there and you're going, what the hell? What, what's been eating? And, and you look and you'll see a little black poop. And just start looking up under the leaves, you're gonna find that hornworm. Or you can use this light here and go out there at night like I do. And look. And then you learn. I, I used to have hornworms eat up my stuff. I put the society garlic all around my garden beds. I don't have problems with hornworms, but that means I can't get too comfortable. Ladies, you meet a man, he like the way you look. Got your little makeup on, your lip sticker. My uncle used to say, oh, what you doing wearing lip sticker? And uh, you keep your hair done and your nails done. And then after you been with him a while, you start getting like uh, comfortable. And he comes over to your mama's house and you got rollers in your hair. And you start letting yourself go and letting your guard down, right? Uh-oh, you can't do that. Same thing it took to get them is the same thing it takes to keep them. So, I have this as a backup plan. I'm not going to let my guard down with my, my tomato plants. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to check every now and then. Just because the society garlic is keeping them off doesn't mean that they're going to forever do that. How many of you all used to like something you would eat it all the time? Then after a while, you all don't want to see another peanut butter sandwich. That's how the Hornworms are. Mm -hmm. After a while, they're going to become immune to the society garlic. So you still got to go back there and check. Don't get too comfortable and let yourself go, ladies. You can't let your garden go either. You got to go check. Just because they looked fine last week, then you didn't go on that side of the food forest because it rained and you need to check nothing out. I'm sorry, you got to do your daily walk. Because if you don't, as soon as you slip, they're going to know. And let me tell y'all something, too, about my owls. I got so many owls, I don't even know how many I got. The birds see the owls, and I move them. I just move the heads just a little bit. Oh, and Bro Farmer 76 had the funniest video. I think I watched it yesterday. Oh, it might have been early this morning I watched him. And he was fussing at the owl because the owl was laying on the ground. He told me, get up, get up. <laughs> and he do have a lot of birds. He has a lot of birds because they just be chirping and chirping and can't even hear what he's saying. And I meant to write this only, but I forgot. There's a plug up under your owl, uh, nephew. 
There's the plug. A little orange plug, I think. Because I've got something like you got that bobblehead. You can take that little orange plug out and then put you some sand in it. I put about 10 pounds of sand in mine. The ones that I'm not going to stick on a T-post. Then you plug it back up and you put it where you want to put it and it won't fall over. So put you some sand in there if you're still listening. I don't know if you're at work or what. Yeah, lip sticker, bougie prepper. That's what my uncle used to call us. Teenage girls, as soon as we became of age and we could wear lipstick, he was like, come here. What you do with that lip sticker? <laughs> it may embarrass you and make you feel bad, you know? <laughs> okay, somebody said they bought the black light last week. That was Ann Dale. Um, yep, I was tired and I wasn't going to get my garden done before I went to bed. I had bugs the next day. Andrea Lucas. You can you cannot let oh I know what I was saying. I started talking about those owls. The birds, if you don't move the owls, they'll come and fly over real fast. I haven't seen a bird land in my yard this whole season. I haven't seen not one since I got a whole lot of owls. And so they'll fly over real fast. And then I'll go and I'll start moving them around a little bit, the birds, the, the owls. But so far, I haven't had any fruit to get picked. Now, know this. When the fruit start getting ripe, the squirrel, oh, somebody's saying it right here. I'm wondering how to turn this little fat groundhog, something about the squirrel. The squirrels are nocturnal. They're going to come at night. And they them owls that don't move, they're going to come and start eating my fruit. So I'm going to show you in the video in a couple of days what I'm getting ready to do for that. I want to tell you right now because you won't watch the video. Okay? So, yeah, you've got to move your squirrels around for the little small uh, birds to be afraid of them. Okay, I was wondering how to turn this little fat groundhog. I think it's competing with the squirrels in my backyard. Oh, man. I don't know too much about that V other than there is a repellent at Home Depot and Lowe's. And it's called Repel All. And you can get it in the spray bottle, the liquid form, or concentrate that you add water to, or the granulars. And it stinks. And I know you, and they have all the little pests on the bottle, uh, V Solo, of what it repels. And the groundhog is one of them. Bobby said I had a beautiful yellow pear and Roma tomatoes. I plan to harvest it today. They look good. Saturday, I was gone and busy yesterday. I checked this morning, and they were gone. That's a hurting feeling, too, because I saw a squirrel who was so domesticated a couple of years ago who had one of my nice, juicy red tomatoes and was sitting on my fence, my privacy fence, eating it and looking at me. Like, show is good. I said, I'll be damned. He ain't even afraid of me. Not afraid of me at all. And that's when I started harvesting my tomatoes when they first blush. If you see me and Bria picking the one off that was red, it's just one we missed. Okay? But I'm not going to let them get full right ever again. I pick them up. Squirrels ate something. I missed it. Oh, yeah. Renee and her Rocky eating her strawberries. I don't have any problem with the squirrels getting my strawberries because I have squirrel. I have uh, owls in there, too. What gets the strawberries are the slugs. And it's my fault because I didn't companion plant with onions this year like I normally do. Yeah, until these, these squirrels and these uh, animals, they are not afraid of us anymore. My husband used to shoot with the BB gun, too. He was a country boy from Mississippi, and he was a very good fisherman, gamesman, everything. I cooked it all for him, but I haven't eaten it. I cooked rabbit, squirrel, goat. Only thing I've ever eaten wild was venison or a deer. 
Yeah, get that repel all D. It does work. It smells, but it works. Okay, let me see. This morning, the black light is no joke. I had to use mine last night. And my deal and two of my tomato plants, yes. I had um, a caterpillar on my deal, but I don't know if it morphed or went someplace else. But it ate most all of it up and it disappeared. Don't let your guard down, right, Helen? Or Helena? Okay. Squirrels ate my bugs. Oh, man. And all of her purple tomatoes. Zena's world. Wow. Man, that's, that's a bad feeling. Okay, I'm just checking out questions. And I think I've got them all. If I miss somebody, go ahead and type it in now. I'm going back to see if I can. If I miss somebody. Kathy is talking about the Miracle Homestand about the dawn. Spraying it with the dish soap in the water. No, ma'am, you cannot do that. Can she's right? You cannot do that when in the heat. That dawn will fry. You go out there and you see your leaves look all funny, purplish, brownish. Yeah. Somebody said they loved um, watching the grandbabies. They are very competitive. That Bria, I bragged on Brian's three tomatoes. She said, I gave him one. I said, okay, we're a team. She's funny. Yes, now is the time, Renee. I ordered some more seeds from Baker Creek. Try a little something different for the fall. You always got to stay ahead about what you're doing. Yes, Deborah White, the sunflowers got a full day of sun. Because they were they had shot up to the point where I couldn't put a shade cloth on them when I did start shading my garden with my 50% and 90% shade cloth. The sunflowers were all the way past my roof then. Hands in Dirt says that he had some flowers on his okra. And laying out his fall garden now. Yeah. I uh, planted early. Let me tell you what I did. I planted early in the greenhouse okra and out there in my prayer garden. And they were making all okra, but they stunted the growth. It was an experiment. I just wanted to try it. I'm not going to do it again. It was too early and it stunted the growth. Okay, good. Teresa Brown says, how deep do you butt the okra? I think she's meant to type putt or sometimes you know YouTube and it'll correct on your phone. Uh, in the pea pellets, I'm only going to put one seed. If it doesn't germinate, I'll put another seed in there later. Now, if I'm doing them in a cup with, uh, let's say, um, potty mix, I'll put three. Like a triangle. Three. And you only need to go as deep as your seed is. So you just need to press it down just a little bit. Because the okra seeds are pretty small. When am I going to plant the fall garden? Well, the okra will be growing in the fall. But I used to start... Uh, I used to go on vacation June, July, one of those weeks, and either in June or July, and I started when I come back. That way I don't have to be worrying about little small seedlings when I'm out of town. So I would say July. 
Now, this is something I want to share with you. I use to grow brassicas in the fall, cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli. It's too hot here to start those seeds. So I'm going to buy cabbage, broccoli, and cauliflower uh, seedling transplants. But last year, I guess because of the pandemic, they were sold out everywhere. And where I found a few, they weren't worth me even buying them. So I've got to grow uh, that this year because I need chow chow. It's a southern relish. I don't know if you all heard of it or make it. It's really good to eat with greens and black eyed peas. And I need some cabbage. Okay. Okay, Antia wants to know, do you eat, ever roast and eat your sunflowers? Not the seeds, but the actual flower. No. Never have. Only the seeds. I didn't know you could eat the flower. Okay. Cynthia's backyard gardening tips. Is it okay to give my newly planted bare root fruit trees comfrey tea? Yes, ma'am. Very diluted. 20 portions comfrey tea. I mean, one point one part comfrey tea, 20 parts water. Because a lot of times when you're planting a fruit tree, you have soil that have fertilizer and stuff like that in it. So you can give them to if you want to, but just make sure it's really diluted. I don't give mine because it's something in the soil. I, I did two cherry trees this fall. I, I use a plant in the fall I saw my nephew, Broke Farmer 76, planting some, and he's not that far from me as far as zones. And I said, well, if I keep him on the patio close to the house, I'll remember to go out there and put shade cloth on it. So I went ahead and bought him for, from fastgrowingtrees.com. I have three more trees ordered that are coming from Stark Brothers. Two LSU uh, figs and purple and one gold, and then I'm through and I have I'm back to where I was before the freeze in February that killed so many of my trees. Okay, I'm looking back and just seeing if I got any questions. Okay, so I think that's it. I want to thank my moderators for being a lovely co-host. And Hands and Dirt said that he starts at the beginning of August. And he really has to babysit his college. Yeah, you got to really do that. Uh, last year in August, uh, it was so hot here. I think like 112 or something like that, Hands in the Dirt. I brought mine inside and put them under grow light. Oh, Debbie Epps is talking about that tr that book, uh, a little fruit tree, grow a little fruit tree, by uh, Ann Raff. Yes. Did you see my okra question, Cherie? Cherie, type it in again, please, and then I'm gonna end this live. Thank you, Kiki Soto. Thank you. You have a beautiful family. I love the um, the rapport you and your husband have. I think he kept he kept the camera on you. He was admiring his wife. And do you so move it? He said something that he couldn't help himself, or he didn't know what he was doing. I thought that was so cute. I love the chemistry between you guys, Lady Sure, I like what you said about cabbage and getting started. Yeah, it's just too hot. It's too hot. Okay, here we go at home. With, do you have to worry about planting different varieties of okra next to, next to each other? No. They're in the same family. Okra, hibiscus, marijuana, plants. You can plant them all together. I ain't, I ain't never grown none, but I just, marijuana. But I'm just saying, if they make it legal, if somebody I know want to go in the business, I can grow okra and hibiscus. I think I can grow that too. Uh, 
but no, they're in the same family, so they won't cross pollinate or anything like that. I've tried a lot of them. Star of David, uh, Ab Abigail's uh, okra, purple okra, orange okra, you know, I, I, all of that. But somebody gave me a hypothetical the hypothetical question about if they legalize marijuana and you can grow it in your backyard. I said, it won't be no problem. Yes, I can grow it for you. <laughs> because it's it's in the same family. And the okra flowers are so pretty. That yellow flower, oh, it's so pretty. Just pretty. All right, good night, everybody. Thank you for being here. Remember, grow your own. Eat your own. It's not hard. You can do it. It's not hard. You got to work smart. Okay? And take what you learn every year. Rhonda, thank you for being here. I hope you can catch the replay because you came in toward the uh, tail and she said she can't wait to watch the replay. Everybody has been... Oh, wait, wait, wait. If you have a YouTube channel, please, please put your gardening zone before you go and what... And they know your channel by your name. Put your garden zone in there so that people can look at this replay and, and, and check you out. If you have a YouTube channel, goodbye, Helena Tyler. Hi, Lin goodbye, Lynette Tucker, Deborah White. Best yet, check out her channel, 8A. Myra McCain, New Jersey, 6B. Renee. Beautiful content. Bernie, wonderful. 7B, 7B. Angel loves garden. She's so cute. 7A. You were looking good, girl, getting ready to go to that Juneteenth celebration with the blue and the earrings. That was my style. I loved it. All of it. Rhonda in Zone 6B. Garden 99, Zone 9. Zena's World, 5B. It's Cynthia's Backyard Guardian and Chips Zone 6. At Home with Cherie, wonderful channel, 4B. Veggie Farm Garden, I've checked you out in Zone 8A. I think I mentioned Zena's World, I'm going to mention it again. And Dale Colony with the Golden Voice, 8A. Check all these people out, guys. We don't need to be fighting over YouTube and squabbling and beefs and just everybody show love to everybody and help everybody nobody knows it all all right grow your own eat your own it's not hard you can do it love you guys and god loves you too bye now